Hello, and welcome to Game Gems. Today, we're going to take a deeper dive into the message bus pattern, which was first introduced in my previous video on room transitions. A message bus is a central dispatcher for system-wide signals, which reduces the complexity of object connections in Godot. Stop me if you've heard this before. You're working on a game, and you've created a scene to represent the bad guys. You've saved this scene so that you can drop it into your levels, but now you have to connect its signals, and maybe have it connect to other signals from your game. But those signals come from somewhere else in the hierarchy, and since your scene is in its own tree and not directly part of your game, you can't just click on them in the editor and connect them normally. You could just walk up the tree and call find node or connect them in the script and a bunch of other ways around this, but that's complex and prone to errors, and if you later move any of the nodes you've connected to, now all your paths are broken. This, among other reasons, is why a message bus is extremely useful. So let's create one and watch the magic. First, create a script somewhere in your project's asset folder. Call it whatever you like. I tend to call mine Messenger, because I'm boring. Next, open your project settings and select the Autoloads tab. Select the script you just created and add it to the list of autoloaded scripts. Close the dialog and go back to your project. What did we just do? An autoloaded script gets instantiated as a node attached to the root of your scene tree. It's outside of your scene tree, though, so even if you change your game's root scene, it won't go away. This makes autoloads super useful for storing data that needs to be accessible anywhere in any script. See where I'm going with this? If not, what this means is that any signals attached to this node are available to any object in the game, regardless of what scene file they're in, without you having to search for them. Let's take a look at an example. I've added a signal called Hello World to the Messenger class and deleted all of the boilerplate code. Now, let's look at this sample project. I've got a base game scene and an enemy scene, and that enemy scene is saved in its own file. The enemy scene wants to respond when the Hello World signal is sent, so let's connect it. In the enemies ready method, I'll connect the signal to a method called say hello. We'll define it in a second. Next, I'll simply create that function and print a message to the console. Finally, I'll add a line in the ready function of the game scene to emit the signal from the messenger. When I run my game, the message is printed to the console as expected. As you can see, removing the need to connect objects to one another directly can be a very useful thing. But are there any limitations? Well, yes. Like everything else in game development, it's a design pattern with pros and cons, and you'll need to evaluate them to see if they're right for your game's architecture. The main limitation is that since all of the messages are coming from the same node, there's no way to tell what node initially triggered the signal to fire. We can get around this by passing the node as the origin of the signal. The other limitation is that, since all signals are routed through the messenger, it's pretty easy for the number of signals to get out of hand, especially if you have a complex UI. I like to put signals on the message bus that the game itself needs to know about, like triggering screen transitions or notifications about changes in the player status, and leave things like buttons closing dialogues to the internals of their scene. Learning how to judiciously balance the implementation of your signals is something you'll get more comfortable with as you gain more experience. Before we go, let's look at a more concrete example. In this project, I've got a level with a player in it and a UI component. The UI component needs to persist across levels, so we don't include it in the level. Same with the player. We're not unloading the player when a new level starts because we want to keep its health and ammo. We do, however, want the UI to indicate how much health and ammo the player has left at any given moment, so the smartest thing to do would be to fire a signal whenever those values change. The first thing we're going to do is to add a setter to the health and ammo variables. Setters are methods that are called whenever the variable's value is changed, and we want to notify the game whenever this happens. In the setter, we change the values of said variable, and then tell the messenger to fire a signal with its new value. In the UI's ready method, we'll connect to the messenger's health updated and ammo updated signals, and when those values change, including when they're initialized, the UI will update its labels to reflect them. And that's it. If you find yourself struggling to implement a clean way for your objects to message one another, a message bus might just be the answer. If you found this video useful, don't forget to like and subscribe for more game gems. See you next time.